In this paper, I try to really describe what I saw in Kabul during my two day stay uh, in the jail, with which uh, nearly 90 of us away from my workplace. So, my topic is Gopala sacrifice among the poles of Kalani, a poor or story. The Gopala sacrifice of poor, which is central to their religious life, gives an insight into the moral discourse of the tribe's corporate life. This paper, very brief in its scope and monolithic in its <coughs> has been written as a case study of the Nikolaiyan of the Gopala sacrifice. The locals where the sacrifice took place is altogether a own village named Sitli Kalyan. In the Nepali club, Nepali, this is in Odisha. Occupationally, the poles are the farmers and marginal duty depend on the forest adjacent to the village. The false sacrifice is the major religious function of the poles and represents the fertility of the sacrifice has been contrived to all the Muslims. All major religions of the world, sacrifice of animals and gods underscores the multiple implications. What has been written on the court of Odisha? The courts are one of the most primitive indigenous communities in Odisha. Gopala sacrifice is a symbol of the court's identity and a ritualistic reflection of their quality. According to the Kalani district gazette, the Khon tribe has three main divisions, Kutia, Dongria, and Desia. The Kutia Khon live in a house off the floor of which is below the level of the ground, around the house. The Dongria Khons are also known as Malia Khons. They live in a high levels. The Desia Khons live in the plain area with other non tribes. The tribe is divided into different sects. The father sacrifice is an important ritual. A ritual practice among the Desiat Khons. Effort is made in the street paper to focus on the ritual dynamics of the Bhopala sacrifice. And it purports to be a case study which I wanted to add to the list mentioned earlier. The Bhopala is sacrificed near the Madara, the college of Harmi, by the Khons between the period from Forces of law appear to Mago Purnima, corresponding to January and February in English calendar. It is celebrated in a village once in every 12 years. Duanetha is observed on the day of semi chapter just before one year in the specified village where the Bokfalo will be sacrificed on the day of semi chapter. For the benefit of all, the village priest called Jani, they call it Jani, tie the piece of rope called Babe to the pillar of the village deity. At the time of Bopala sacrifice, the rope is tied to the Bopala which is sacrificed. It is the sacred duty of all the poems to join in the Dwandeta festival which falls on the day of Zemijatra. It is a psychological preparedness that the Bopala will be sacrificed the next year. Sacrificing the Bopala near the Dharmi is called Bopala sacrifice. The meaning of words is here is sacrifice. For the purpose of Bopala sacrifice, the Bopala is purchased by the priest Pajani. This Bopala is considered to be the son of Kujani. A drum is beaten and clarinet is blown in the designated call village just before one month, both in the morning and in the evening. At the appropriate time, just before one month of the Bofala sacrifice, a wooden stump is fixed on the heart. The sacrificial Bofala hair is caught before one month. It is left free to move, which doesn't go out of the village as it is mesmerized by mantra. Three types of priests are engaged for the Bofala sacrifice. They are designated as Kurjani, Jogjani, and Rubazan. Kurjani belongs to the village where Bofalo will be sacrificed. The Jogjani belongs to the nearby village. He is invited to perform and help in the sacrificial process. It is the duty of the Jogjani to call the Bofalo to the sacrificial altar. He also takes care of the Bofalo, 
sanctifies the pillar and all other things which are related to the Bhopalo sacrifice. Gobhadani is the man priest and he performs the Harni Puja or the Puja of the mother. He knows the reason of Gopala sacrifice and the meat related to the part of the cones. Gobhadani is invited from other villages. Gobhadani asked the Bhopalo from the Kurjani in the evening just a day before the Bhopalo will be sacrificed. As discussed earlier, this Bhopalo is the symbolic song of Kurjani who hands it over to Gobhadani. Jujani is the mediator between the two. The sacrificial Bhopalo visits each and every household of the village and then is brought near the Dharni Mata to be sacrificed. At this time, Jogjani is drawn by order of Gobhazani who ties the Bhopalo with a piece of rope. So the place and process of was. So all the dailies and materials find place near the sacrificial altar, which has been used by the cone since their birth. The Dharni Mata is worshipped in the middle of the cone village. The place of worship is of course very wide and spacious. A small pillar stone is placed near a big stone facing towards the west. They are called Dharam and Dharni. The deity Dharni is also known as Jarendri. Probably it is derived from the root word Jara, the steel. A round shaped boundary wall made of bamboo at a radius of 10 to 12 feet is in a circle to the deity. <coughs> of course, the door is kept closed. Three numbers of eggs and three handfuls of rice grain are kept uh, near Dharni Mata. They are the representative of Lord Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahishra. Many kinds of traditional weapons are also kept beside the stones like axe, bow, and arrow. A decorated umbrella called Dharni Chhatar comes from the village of Jogjani. Likewise, all the invited poles come with their traditional arms and weapons like bows, arrow, axe to take part in the festival. It's a symbol of their strength. The Jogjani is invited five days before the Gopala sacrifice and he places the Kendu stump near the Dharni Mata. This is called Jog Kuta. Two numbers of bottle gold are hung on the Jog Kuta. So in the afternoon of the day before the Gopala sacrifice, the village become crowded male female priests of all the common villages gathered a large number. The <coughs> priests transferred into a war place as the young poles dance around the village with sword, bow, axe, arrows in their hands as we witnessed the same thing yesterday. They, they also hold indigenous weapons like Ramkati, Kama, Sin, Horn of Anger. They keep on dancing around the entire village throughout the night. It continues till next day and the dance stops when the process for the worship begins. Jogjari invites the village Dharni Mata and the daddy's umbrella near the place of worship to call to call women appear as Dharni Mata and Chadan Mata. These two women with dishabled hair, wearing red spotted clothes, wearing ornaments of the dainty and drinking wine dance uncontrollably. This dance fine tunes with the beat of the cone drum. The village procession invites respectfully to the other villages procession as for the custom. At an auspicious time in the evening the Jogjani commemorates the Palikara of the Dharmi Mata, which is kept close by the Temple Bandha. From the from that place he invites the Gohazani, Kurjan remains inactive there. Gohadani is the man player of that night. He invites the deity by offering wine. He has to recite the history of the deity in order to please her. For this purpose, the Gohadani chants mantras and followers in a chorus. This process continues throughout the night. They offer wine, drink it, and sing throughout the night. If the Gohadani sings a single stanza of the summary about the deity, his followers recite it for five to ten times. The entire audience come to know about the part of the poems, the meat of the deity, and its history from, the, from this recitation. The old people of the village instruct and
correct the Gopasani if there is a deviation in the mitological sum. This is called a Gopautra sum. It ends at dawn. A Gopautra means incarnation of the deity's strength. The previous glory of the poem is remembered by singing the creation part of the poem. The Kutia and Dumriya poem tie the neck of the buffalo with a two folded wooden plant and sacrifice it. Whereas the local poems feed bamboo hay to the buffalo and strike it in four to five attempts and dismember the head from the body. During the process of slaughter, the food giant touches the axe to the buffalo. After that, anyone from the audience can strike it. If he fails to strike it one in one attempt, and if any sound comes from the buffalo's mouth, it is believed that the Kujani dies within that year. So after the slaughter of the buffalo, the cones carry their soul, axe, knife, bow, throw rice on the audience so that no one from the audience can take away the buffalo meat. The audience run away from that place because it is considered as ominous. On whom the rice falls. Secondly, the sight and the figure is all is also terrible to look at. Then the head of the buffalo is offered to the deity. To the deity, blood of the buffalo is also offered in a clay pot. Then the cones uh, as consecrated food. The cones do not blow their fill up to the next seven days of the ceremony. They also deposit the meat in their field with the hope of higher day. At the place of worship, cone if <coughs> the buffalo sacrifice is obviously indicative of the structure of power and authority. The buffalo seems to be the most prized position for the tribe, hence the ritual propitiation for the art. The battle-like rituals display their courage, and the process of ritualization brings into fruition a rich clan bond and intertribal solidarity. Power and authority are consequently negotiated within this process of ritualization. The colonial anthropologists and folklorists categorize them into two divisions, and the hill poles and the plain poles. They are of the Dravidian structure, but as now the poles 